Right, so you have indicated that you and your partner are together offshore. So if you're watching this, you're overseas, you're not in Australia, and obviously you're exploring now what the most appropriate option is to get into Australia. Now that might be you as the applicant or the sponsor, you considering options for your partner. I'm just gonna address you as you the applicant to keep it simple. So let's draw this. This is Australia, kind of. Now, what you should do is really influenced or dictated by a couple of factors. Firstly, your country of passport. And secondly, how quickly you want to be in Australia. The reason I, I say that is your country of passport pretty much dictates how easy it is for you to get into Australia on a visa. If you hold a passport from Europe, the States, Canada, etc., then you are eligible for an ETA or an e visitor, which are instantly granted more or less and cheap, if not free. These are multiple entry, 12 month valid visas, and they are a way in. Once you are in, you can then look to explore to submit the onshore partner visa, which is a combined application for two visas, the 820 and the 801. Both require that you are in a genuine married relationship when the visa is submitted or a genuine de facto relationship when the visa is submitted, plus prove you've been in a de facto relationship for 12 months prior to lodgement or waive the 12 month requirement. If you'd like more information on how to waive the 12 month requirement for de facto couples, please have a look at our YouTube channel. There's a video there dedicated to talking about that in a lot more detail. So this is the first variable. What is your country of passport? Are you able to come into the country easily? If you are, then depending on the answer to, your, to the next question, dictates if this is the appropriate option. If your country of passport is not one that permits the ETA or the e-visit are being granted to you and you have to apply for the manual tourist visa to get into, into Australia, then depending on the outcome of that application, you know, if it's approved, then depending on the conditions they put on it, then that might be an option to come on shore and apply for an onshore partner visa. But if it's refused, you can't. You can't come on shore, it's been refused, you're not eligible for another streamlined tourist visa. And realistically, there really aren't many other ways into Australia. Um, there really is a handful of temporary visas that get people into Australia. They are these tourist visas that I've described, student visas, working holidays, and potentially you know, being sponsored by an employee in, which is very rare. So let's assume it's none of those, and you're exploring the pathway of leveraging one of these temporary tourist visas to get a partner on shore. Now, if ultimately you're looking to come to Australia quickly, and when I say quickly, I mean within the next six months. If the plan is to be in Australia within the next six, six months or less, then if your country of passport permits one of these visas, assuming you are in a genuine married relationship or assuming you are in a de facto, genuine de facto relationship and can prove it and meet that criteria, then that's typically the recommendation is utilize the visa, come on shore, work on what I call your Australian top-up evidence, show that you've started to live together here in Australia, open up Australian joint bank accounts, start your life here in Australia, use the time that you have on your multiple entry tourist visa, which is typically three months on your entry, and submit this onshore partner visa before the expir expiration of that three month period, get your bridging visa A automatically, and then you have work rights, you have study rights, you have Medicare, rights and most importantly arguably you're in australia waiting for that onshore partner visa together with your australian partner who can come in on their australian passport so that's a quick crash course of that that pathway if however your country passport does not permit this and you must apply manually whether or not this is an option depends on the outcome of this visa now there's a youtube video dedicated to talking about a bit of this in in a lot more detail in, in that, the context of that video is when couples are apart, but it still applies to the situation. In Even if couples are together offshore and you're trying to get in quickly, you know, if you want to be here within the next six months, 
then we suggest exploring this option. The reason is that the tourist visa can be granted in a couple of months. These are instantly granted. So if they work, you're in quickly. If then, however, the answer to the question is, we don't have an immediate rush to come to Australia because this, the context of this video is talking to couples that are together overseas. And that typically means the Australian sponsor is living and working where the applicant lives. Might be their home country, might be a, a mutual kind of third country that both the applicant and sponsor are in. If you have a projected need to come into Australia, but it's not immediate, you know, it's not in the next six months, but you know it's within the next 12 to 24 months, then this may not be appropriate. What may be appropriate is to bypass all of this and assuming you are in a married or de facto relationship or even engaged, you would apply for an offshore partner visa. Now there's really kind of two pathways for offshore partner visas. There's the 309 for couples that are de facto, de facto married. And then there's the prospective marriage visa for couples that are engaged. Which of those is suitable to your facts really depends on a, a lot of f factors, a lot of variables, and I can't record a video that kind of covers them in detail or specific or bespoke to your situation. That is, of course, the type of conversation we can have with people that book calls with our team. But a quick summary, quick recap is that if you have no immediate need to come right now, but you know it's in the near future, in the next 12 months or more, then perhaps skip this altogether. Don't waste your time or money in submitting tourist visas, getting ETAs when they may not be necessary, and you might be better off just applying directly for the offshore 309-300. Um, however, look, what I would say is, we like to avoid offshore partner visas really as much as possible. There's just so much variation in terms of how long they're gonna take, and that, that can be difficult to manage in future in that, let's say you commit to submit one of these visas, at the time you submitted, you thought, okay, we don't wanna be there you know, for the next 12 months. That, that fits, uh, but then plans change. Now you've committed to one of these visas, plans change, you wanna come quickly, then you've already submitted the offshore visa. You might still be able to get one of these visas that come in, but it doesn't, you, you don't get bridging visas for offshore partner visas in that situation. So the point is that if your country of passport permits the ETA or e-visitor, I would probably almost be inclined to say, there's no need for you to really ever consider this offshore pathway. Just wait until you know you wanna come, apply for these visas, come onshore and apply for an onshore. That way you're in control, the application is assessed here, and you're together here in Australia. If, however, you don't have that luxury, you don't have that option of coming in on an ETA or e-visitor, then, and you're together overseas, and you wanna avoid this uncertainty of an offshore partner visa, then it's always worth attempting a tourist visa. And that's something I cover in a lot more detail in that YouTube video that I referenced. It's called Get Your Partner Here Fast, Offshore Partner Visa and Tourist Visa Strategies Options, something along those lines. Uh, so please have a look at that video for a, a, a more, uh, more in-depth explanation. The other thing I would recommend that all couples do, irrespective of their situation, is please watch our Partner Visa Secrets modules, also available on our YouTube channel. It is, in simple terms, like getting your diploma for your Australian Partner Visa. It's about three hours worth of content where I cover everything you would ever need to know about Partner Visa criteria and options like this in a lot more detail. And uh, it's worth your while. You have my, my, my promise and my guarantee. Lastly, for couples that would like to have a conversation around this strategy or options and are interested in our team handling the process for them, somewhere around this video, there should be a link to book a call with our team. We have free calls for couples that are interested in our services. So please have a look around and book a call at your convenience. Alternatively, if you're the type of couple that might be looking to do this on your own, we have alternative products and services that are geared towards helping couples or providing support to couples that might not necessarily need to engage our full representation, but need support, need help along the way. And to keep it simple, that revolves around downloadable digital resources or VZ, which is our partner visa preparation software and subscription. In simple terms, it gives you access to chat support while you prepare your own application using the system itself. More information around the video, but suffice to say, we give you different options depending on the level of need or support that you have around around this journey. So I hope this video helps Martin from Self Migration 
and I look forward to hearing about your partner visa journey in future. Thank you very much.